Good evening. There is still time to participate in the Leesor County Adopt-A-Family for Christmas. There are still so many needs to be met. Please stop by the back of church in the foyer to see how you can help. Family lists will be available to look at, or if you desire, you can leave a monetary donation at this time. You can also check in today's bulletin for details about ways you can support this program to make Christmas brighter for needy families in Leesor County. We are looking for individuals, families, or groups to light our Advent wreath this Advent season. Check out the bulletin for how to sign up or simply call the parish office. What a beautiful way for you to get involved. The St. Wenceslaus Live Night Nativity is next Friday. Join us right before the Parade of Lights from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. on the front lawn. There will be animals, music, and a free hot dog dinner. Come celebrate the most beautiful time of the year with us. Welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist. Please join in singing together number 574, Crown Him with Many Crowns, 574. Please rise. Good evening, church. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God in on earth. Peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your ma majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Near restful waters he leads me, he revives my soul. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for the length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. of the world says the Lord whoever follows follows me will have the light of life hallelujah 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me, naked, and you clothed me, ill, and you cared for me, in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. 
I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was in seminary, we had one class that was a struggle for several of us. It was singing. It was our music class that we all had to take. And the first day, the teacher would have us all stand up one by one and sing a verse of a song, whatever song we wanted. And from that time, we were separated, the sheep from the goats. <laughs> Those who may have had a little bit more experience or talent in singing and those who had a little less. And from then on out, we were taught differently according to our skills. And of course, this being seminary, we were literally known as the sheep and the goats. Now, this, of course, is hearkening to our readings today, especially our gospel. It's a hard one, because as we come to this feast day, the end of our liturgical year, the feast of Christ, the King of the universe, the scripture is bringing together all that we have been learning about over the last month. See, the last month we have been covering the four last things. That when Jesus Christ comes again, there are the four things that will remain. Death, judgment, hell, and heaven. And as I have been sharing, to meditate upon these four last things is actually quite useful and helpful for us in how we are to live in this life and to prepare us for the next. Last week particularly, we heard a lot about judgment. And when I say particularly, I mean that exactly. Because in judgment, there are two judgments we will all experience. The first, the particular judgment. Upon our death, we will be judged individually. But our readings today are all about that second judgment, the final judgment. Think of Michelangelo's final judgment in the Sistine Chapel. You have the sheep and the goats that are being separated, the saints and all of those who have turned away from God being separated with Christ in the middle as the judge. That's very much what our gospel today is talking about. But we need to look at who Christ is in this moment. Christ as judge is seen Christ as ruler, Christ as king, the very feast of today. And one image that is used throughout scriptures for Christ as king, and for kingship in general, is the shepherd. That's why we have Psalm 23 today. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He will guide me to green pastures. This guidance, this act of guidance, is how God rules here in our lives today. When it comes to the final judgment, he will judge and rule by judgment. But he gives us time. He gives us time to work things out, right, on our own. We have to do that quite a bit as humans. But thankfully, he has given us grace. He has given us himself, his own son. 
and through his Son, has given us the grace to do well in this life, to live like him. See, all of us who are baptized after the baptism in the prayers of that liturgy, immediately we hear, you have been baptized as priest, prophet, and king, sharing in the very being of who Christ is. These are the three ways that Christ operates, priest, prophet, and king. So then, our question is, as we are being incorporated into him, like our second reading points out, that through man we will all die, but through Christ we will all be brought to life, recapitulating, literally recap, R, cap is for the Latin, from the Latin word for head, re, make to head again, to bring everything up together into the head of Christ, the headship, the kingship of Christ. Sorry, I'm a geek. There's a little etymology there for you. <laughs> That's all right. But if we are to truly live recapitulated in Christ, truly live as like Christ as king, we too must rule in this life. Must rule. But how did Christ rule? He ruled as the good shepherd. We heard in our first reading of some not-so-good shepherds <laughs> in ancient Israel. The prophet Ezekiel was decrying them. And frequently, when we look at shepherds of that time, it wasn't exactly the most honorable profession. <laughs> they were seen as kind of scoundrels and scumbags. But Christ redeemed that, recapitulated that image into what we think of now. The good shepherd that guides his flock guides others to his love, to know him, to love him, and to serve him more deeply each day. And so once again, I ask us, how are we, each and every one of us, called to embody Christ as king in this life? We must be like the good shepherd, guiding others along the way of this life bringing them ever closer to Christ. And so we revisit our gospel. Christ himself points out how we are to live as Christ the King, how we are to embody his grace, his love here in this life, how we are to fulfill our baptism in him. We are called to feed those who are hungry, we are called to give shelter to the homeless. We are called to care for and visit the sick and imprisoned. But this isn't just simply an easy thing to do. It's more nuanced. See, there are many ways that one can be hungry. And all of these things we have to do not just to help because we're good people, right? Nobody went to heaven just because they were a good person. They went to heaven because they lived from God's grace and let that grace be known in this world. They received justification from God, were sanctified by their works here in this life, and were glorified by God's grace. So, we must have God's grace animate everything that we do. And it must be concrete. It must embody in our lives. Because, yeah, we can go around and being nice to people, but if we don't truly care for them as God does, I'm sorry, folks. This is the hard news. We ain't getting to heaven. <laughs> So, let us look to feed the hungry. That means 
that all of those that we know who are physically, materially hungry, who need food, God is calling us to give not only from our abundance, but from our need itself. We have a food shelf, literally kitty corner from us, people. <laughs> and I know that they are in need. We can give to them, even if we do not know anyone ourselves. But it's not just a physical hunger. What about the spiritual hunger? To be fed the truth. To be fed God's goodness. People are dying out there. Dying from a lack of spiritual nourishment. And we have been given God's grace, God's faith to share with them. They hunger. And you know what? They thirst too. Because it's not just spiritual thirst or physical thirst that we need to help with. It is spiritual thirst as well. Those who desire in their hearts to drink from the spiritual fountain of water that fountain of baptism, to be received into this church. That means that we have to go out and invite them in. <laughs> that can be hard. Now, we're not called to be Bible bashers, or we're not called to be overbearing or pushy, but we are called to invite. Not just for our sake, not for the sake of adding numbers to St. Wen's parish rosters, but for the sake of their souls. Next we have give shelter to the homeless, clothing to the naked. We are called to serve those most in need in our communities, those most marginalized. I know somebody who may or may not be up on this altar who goes every single month to a homeless shelter. And by the way, it's not me. <laughs> goes to a homeless shelter and literally does this. <laughs> Feeds, or sorry, clothes the naked and helps to bring shelter and permanent housing to those who need it. We need that. We need that service. We must embody this in our lives. But there's also the spiritual element of it as well. Those who go without any sort of shelter in the Lord. And then finally, those who are sick and imprisoned. Those who are in the hospital. Those who may be homebound because of illness or old age. We are called to visit them. Shakopee Penitentiary is just up the road, people. <laughs> they need chaplains too. We can volunteer and help by visiting them. And then, of course, the spiritual sick. Those who are spiritually ill with addiction, with sin, with vice in their lives. Those who are imprisoned to the chains of the evil one. We are called to pray for them. We are called to reach out to them. We are called to call them out <laughs> in their sinfulness, but out of love for them as well. See, we need to have not just the corporal works of mercy, but the spiritual works of mercy as well. This is what Christ is pointing to in our readings this evening. All of us are baptized priests, prophet, and king. So as we celebrate Christ the King this weekend, let's truly learn to live as he is calling us to live, to be as kings in this world, guiding others to know his love more deeply through our charitable work. As we learn to let our faith embody itself in action, let us stand and together profess that faith.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Recognizing the need for God's grace throughout our world, let us turn to him with our prayers. That the church will always be a place where the truth, mercy, love, and wisdom of Christ the King shines forth. We pray to the Lord. For world leaders, that they will see their power as a sharing in the authority of God and reflect it in the way they govern. We pray to the Lord. That the culture of life proclaimed by Christ the King will reign in every human heart. We pray to the Lord. For those caught in addictions, that Christ the King will liberate them. We pray to the Lord. For the victims of tyranny, persecution, oppression, and racism, that the justice of Christ the King will rid the world of every trace of hatred. We pray to the Lord. For the grace this week to surrender ourselves in obedience to the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we turn to you today with these prayers along with those that reside deep in our hearts. And so we offer them to you through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing together number 943, Bread of Life from Heaven, 943. Gave him wealth in the life 
life of the world. Come learn the true and the living way, that the fullness of life may be yours. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Love as the one who in love for you gave himself for the life of the world. Come to the one who is food for you that your hunger and thirst be no more. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace. He might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. 
that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Wenceslas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, his assistants, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Number 939, Behold the Lamb, 939. Those who were in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. We who live, we who die, are grateful for this gift. Thankful for God's love. Behold, behold the Lamb of God. All who eat, all who drink shall live. And all. Dwell in God 
shall come to know God's glory. Peaceful now, those whose hearts are blessed with understanding. Of the wheat, of the wine, united with God's word. And the love we share. Behold, behold the Lamb of God. All who eat, all who drink shall live. And all, all who dwell in God shall come to know. Glory, gentle one, child of God, join with us at this table. Bless our lives, nourish all who hunger for this feast. Shelter them with peace. Behold. Behold the Lamb of God, all who eat, all who drink shall live, and all, all who dwell in God shall come to know God's glory. Lord of all, give us light, deliver us from evil. Make us one, be our shield, make still the winds that blow. Cradle us with love. Behold, behold the Lamb of God. All who eat, all who drink shall live, and all, all who dwell in God shall come to know God's glory. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Join in singing together number 573, to Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King, 573. To Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, all praise and homage do we bring, and thanks and